y'all. Today we're covering the best books that I've read in 2017. I got a few requests to film this video, so I sat down today with my Kindle and scanned through everything that I've read in the last year. And I will tell you, it was difficult to narrow it down. There was only a couple that I've read where it's like, eh, I'm not gonna mention this. Nearly everything else I very much enjoyed and would like to share, but I tried to narrow it down to my absolute favorites. You know the books where it's like, okay, just one more chapter, then I'm gonna turn the light off and go to bed, and then you realize it's like 3 a.m.? Those are the ones I'm talking about that you just get excited to read. And I share this list in the hopes that one of these books can bring joy to some of y'all too, and in the hopes that y'all will give me your favorites for 2017. Like I've been saying recently, I've, I've downloaded a lot of samples, but nothing's really jumping out at me lately. I want another book that I just can't put down, where I have my Kindle just like glued to my face for the next three days until I finish it. So let's go ahead and get into it. First of all, I will freely admit that I love like dirty, raunchy, trashy chiclet. I love sweet historical fictional romance. I love to read about strong female protagonists. Maybe my book picks are not right up your alley. Totally cool. We all have different tastes, but I'm not going to lie to you and say that I'm like sitting up here reading Jane Austen every day because I'm not. Reading is my main form of entertainment. I don't really go to movies, don't really watch TV. I read and I watch YouTube. So this list is in no particular order. I could not begin to do like a top 10 and rank them. It would just be impossible. But the number one book that I do really want to share that I think a lot of people would really enjoy is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I read this book when I was on summer vacation this July and I came back home and when I did my favorites the next month, I just raved about it. It was so good, so good. In fact, now that I'm writing this list, I kind of want to go reread it. And the big plot twist is the thing, like I want to tell y'all most about this story, but if anyone actually wants to read it, I don't want to spoil it because learning it, letting it develop was just, oh, it's such a good reward. It is such a good book. It's about this like fading movie star who was huge in the golden age of Hollywood and she's been married seven times and this reporter, you know, young girl, modern age, is trying to ask out of her seven husbands who was the love of her life and I'm telling you the answer it's just it's so good and moving on to my second book which is Marlene by C.W. Gortner about Marlene Dietrich you will probably start to see a thread of those very strong female protagonists that tends to be the books that I'm attracted to for some reason if the main female protagonist in a book is, is like whiny or whatever like I just I can't stand it I don't read them I they get on my nerves Anyway, so Marlene, this was another book that I raved about earlier in the year. It is a historical fiction based off the life of Marlene Dietrich, so it's not necessarily an autobiography. I'm sure the author did take some liberties, but he tried to bring to life and tell a story of her life, and she was absolutely scandalous, especially for her time. She was totally out of the closet as a bisexual, but she didn't even consider, like she would never label herself as that. She just said she slept with whoever she want to like it was very European is what she called it she was from Germany and um, touring with the Allies during World War II even though she was a native German I mean she just had an amazing remarkable life story and this book is like hot sexy at the same time like and then also like educational historical just oh it's so good highly recommend Another historical fiction, The Alice Network by Kate Quinn. I also read this one when I was on vacation. And for some reason this year when I was on vacation, I read some really, really good books. Do they release a lot of books in the summer or something like that? I, I don't know, but I, I read some amazing ones. Quite a few on this list are all from that time frame. So The Alice Network by Kay Quinn is a historical fiction, but it was based on a true story. Of these allied female spies in World War I and World War II who were so integral in fighting the war, um, they were implemented in like France and Germany, would sneak across boundaries and just pass on information to the allies. And and their stories are just so, I mean, just funny, heartbreaking, loving, just devastating, so good. One of the main characters is based on a real historical person. Her name was like Louise de Betigny or something like that. She was like 
French and high up in society and she like risked everything um, to be a spy and pass on information to save her country and she died for it. So definitely another book that I would highly recommend. I also finished the Crazy Rich Asian series by Kevin Kwan. It is being turned into a movie with Michelle Yeoh who's from um, Memoirs of a Geisha from the movie. I'm really excited for it. But I read the first book, Crazy Rich Asians, last summer when I was on vacation and I loved it. I thought it was good, but I didn't realize there was a second and a third book, so I just kind of finished it and moved on with my life. Well, this year I realized that there was and I downloaded both of them, read them, and loved them. They definitely are still kind of chiclet. There's some shallowness to it about like fashion, fancy dinners, fancy cars, etc. But I will tell you, I have learned a lot about Singapore. That is where the main story is kind of based. Of course, it kind of like branches out elsewhere into like the UK, the US, everywhere. But the story of this family it's so good, it's so intriguing, it's very heartwarming and still kind of has like this bitchiness, chiclet side to it. Really good. I highly recommend the series if you haven't read it. It is not new by my understandings, but it's really good. I do have a couple kind of classic books that I'm sure you're going to recognize and be surprised that I didn't read until 2017, and that would be Memoirs of a Geisha by Arthur Golding and The Help by Katherine Stockett, both of which have been turned into movies, both of which I love. I, still, I love those movies. The costuming in both is gorgeous. But as always, the book is still way better than the movie. There's just things they can't get to in two hours. To be honest, the books are way more heartbreaking. It's, it's a much harder story than they tell in the movies, but that's what makes it so much more rewarding in the end. This next book is the only book on this list that made me ball my eyes out. You may remember in the favorites video when I mentioned this, I laid in my bed when I finished this book and I cried my freaking eyes out. I did. It like broke my heart. It makes me want to like cry just thinking about it. It is The Secret Wife by Gil Paul. I'm sure you know the story of the last Tsar of Russia, Tsar Nicholas and his five children, four daughters, then the youngest boy with hemophilia. You know, Anastasia was supposedly like saved from this brutal murder. Anyway, so this book takes over as if Tatiana, the second oldest daughter, is the one who flees and escapes with her life. And I'm telling you, end of this book, so heart heartwarming and heartbreaking at the same time. Although I will tell you, I've always been fascinated by those four girls and felt like really personally connected to the story. I don't know why. I love the story of Titanic too. Um, just such a tragedy, like a senseless tragedy. It sets your mind to wondering. And I remember being like elementary school and like checking out books, reading more about them. I believe it was because the movie Anastasia Anastasia came out and I love that movie so much that it like piqued my interest. And finally, I wanted to mention one of my favorite authors. She had a book come out this year. It is Jennifer Robeson. She writes amazing historical fiction, mostly set like early 20th century. To be honest with you, her first two books in this series are two of my favorite books of all time. And they're just like historical fictions, but I just loved them so much. But the beginning of the series was called Somewhere in France. That one is still my favorite, but the second one after the war is over, that was set around World War I. Both of those are amazing and I can reread them over and over again. Then the third book, Moonlight in Paris, was good. And the fourth one, which came out this year and I read, um, was Goodbye from London. And I like the last two. I'm not going to hate on them, but I will tell you the huge difference in the first two versus the last two is that in the last two, she has removed any sex scenes. Like there's nothing steamy, nothing hot. It's like a kiss is the hottest thing in those books. So I don't know if she like got some negative feedback about it, publishers, comments, reviews. I don't know, but I will tell you the first two books were like perfect as they were. But in general, any of those I would highly recommend. They don't really need to be read in order. They're standalones on their own, but there are a few little ties for people who have actually read the whole series that kind of makes sense that wouldn't otherwise. And I cannot end this video without mentioning my two rereads. Of course, you know, they're not new to me in 2017, so they kind of don't count or whatever, but I love them so much, I have to mention them. And the first one is Eat, Pray, Love by Elizabeth Gilbert. I have a tradition where I read this book every summer right before I go on summer vacation because it puts me in the right headspace and the right heart space. That book 
for me personally, it is almost a spiritual guide. It truly is. And I can see a marked difference in the way I present myself to the world and how I feel on the inside when I read that book. I do. It puts me in a happier place. And then this year, just a couple months ago, I reread the entire Harry Potter series. I'm so glad I did, yet I am so sad inside that it's over again. So maybe I need to give it a few months and reread it again because I just enjoy it so much. And they're just so well written. You know, you don't really think about it until you read some things and then go back to something like that where the text is so rich and she does such a good job of truly putting you there in that scene. And then you try to move on to something else and it's like, oh, this is crap in comparison. So those were my favorite books of 2017. I would highly recommend every single one of them, as long as your taste in reading and books is kind of along the same lines as mine. So I'm gonna go ahead and run and rest my throat because unfortunately I woke up this morning with that telltale tickle and tightness in your throat when you know you're about to get freaking sick. My birthday is tomorrow. I'm so upset because last year in January, I got strep throat and got it so bad, I ended up coming down with scarlet fever. And it's like, every year on my birthday, I'm just gonna get sick, freaking wonderful. Anyway, so I'm gonna go rest up. I don't know, drink some Alka-Seltzer or something. I'm gonna try to figure out how to stem this from getting any worse. But thank y'all so much for watching. I'll see y'all in a couple of days in my next video. Don't ever forget, it is perfectly okay to just be small town famous. Love y'all, bye.